hello guys welcome back so in this episode number six i gonna take one very important question and which is actually important for a job profile which is a mixed signal profile in a profile where you need to work on or you need to have a knowledge on digital and also the analog and roughly going forward i guess every team would be a mixed signal team only because if you want to design a ic then you need to have a knowledge of analog and digital if your profile is purely digital right and you know everything about digital digital concepts and your friend also know everything about digital but he also know little bit more insight about analog also then a interviewer or an, an employer will select your friend so that means if you are preparing for digital and that's why you are looking into this series of CMOS inverter but there also you need to have a little bit knowledge of analog and by virtue of this question your interviewer from inverter only can know that do you know the knowledge of analog or not as per a digital engineer if you give a high voltage then your nmos is on if you give a low voltage then your nmos is off that's all for digital engineer but if you have the inside of analog world then you need to answer that what will happen with your nmos when your voltage is transiting from the VDD, the top high voltage to the low voltage in between. And if you just recall your concept of NMOS or the MOSFET, then you probably know two terms. And those are linear region of operation and saturation region. And for this video, you need to have knowledge of these two things because I am not going to explain you here what this means. So the question is that if you have a inverter and if you give a signal V in, then probably you will be having your VTC like this. But anytime you just increase your V in, then what is happening with your PMOS? And what is happening with NMOS or in which region your PMOS and NMOS gonna be there and mind it it's a very important question and in my interview I personally got this question there so please be attentive because it will examine your analog knowledge also or the how much deeply you know about your NMOS device or MOSFET device roughly saying because you we will also deal with PMOS but before going there we need to define something or few things and those are this which we have already defined during our fourth lecture and I guess by now you already know how this thing came to existence so let's get started but before that you guys are not liking my video today's target is of 50 likes I think I deserve 50 likes so please like this video and then only I'll start this video so now I have this VTC already drawn to save our time and I have donated few points here probably this is point A, point B, point this point C, D and E and our task is that we need to tell our interviewer that whenever we are transversing from point A to point E to up to 2.5 our V in then what is happening with our PMOS and NMOS. So let's start the discussion with PMOS first because PMOS is harder to understand than the NMOS. So I'll explain about the PMOS here first. So this is my PMOS and I have region A and throughout I have B, C, D and E. And also let include this point also. So probably let name this point as our starting point X. And this extreme point is Y. So let me add another row here. So it is X and it is Y and it is E or P MOS. So before we start analyzing this circuit, we need to know one equation, very important equation, and that is the conditions of your N MOS or the MOSFET whenever it go from saturation to linear to cutoff. So for cutoff and it is clean and clear that if your VGS is less than VT then it will be in cutoff region. Then we have another equation and that is if your VGS minus VT is greater than your VDF and these things are true for both NMOS and PMOS. 
for PMOS you probably have some confusion because your VDS will be negative your VGSN will be negative so for PMOS what we do we just take a mod here your VT for PMOS will also be negative so just take the absolute number don't confuse with those signs they are not important here and the last equation is when your VGS minus VT is less than VDS and this is the situation for all the three region this is your cut off this is your linear and this is your saturation so that means if at point x we find out what are these things like vgs minus vt is it greater smaller or what then we can find out the region of operation so let's start for pmos so for pmos at point x what is happening see at point x our v in is 0 our v out is 2.5 right and if we put this information to here then you will find out your vgs p is your v in minus vdd vdd is already 2.5 but our v in is 0 here so that means this is our minus 2.5 and i again said you don't don't confuse with uh, signs because uh, whenever we deal with this thing we deal with it as a mod so it will be if we take the mod so it will be 2.5 and what about your vdsn your vdsn your v out is 2.5 and your vdd is also 2.5 so our vdsn is tending to 0 so that means your vgsp is obviously more than vt so that means we are not at cutoff region and if we take the second equation then you will probably find and you will tell me hey we don't know vt so vt would be some constant term 0 0.3 0 0.5 so it's okay but without the knowledge of vt also we can directly say hey our vgs is something 2.5 like mod vgs and your vds is tending to zero that means this is the true here this is true here and so that means at x our pmos would be at linear region right so likewise you need to find out for each region and you need to tell your interviewer what are those and if you can explain this thing fine superb i guess you got your job so let's go to point v and you tell me what will happen now so at point v you can find out that we are roughly our v in is roughly at 0.5 or roughly something around 0.5 or v in but our v out is still very high right and if your v out is still very high and your v in is very small that means our vgsp will be nearly about 2.5 or probably little less than that but our vdsn because your v out is very near to 2.5 and vdd is 2.5 so it will again tending to zero probably it will 0.45 minus so that means our pmos will still be at linear region right now if you find out for, for point b then also it will be in linear region how i say it because i know about this equation and we will get from this equation to this equation only after our v in start getting more than the v out for example let's consider point c so at point c we have this mid region v in equal to v out equal to vm right so if i put this point c things here so for point C you can find out that our, your V in is same and your V out is same at point C and VDD are already same so that means your VGSP equal to VDSN and if I come here your VGSN is equal to VDS but this side have a minus term of VT so that means for sure this will be lower than the VDS so that means at point C our PMOS would be at saturation region for one time two time you need to solve this thing after that you will be sure like you don't need to go to each and every point and get the thing you directly can say that for your pmos this side your pmos will be at linear region and this side till the point e roughly your pmos would be a saturation region for example let's consider point e at point e see your v out is very high or nearly it is one but your v out is very low and if i put this information here then you can see your v in is very high right or let put these things here so our v in here one and your vdd is already 2.5 so we'll get roughly minus 1.5 right 
and our v out here is very small it is less than 5 here you can see less than 5 so i can take it uh, 0.4 and minus 2.5 and you will get something near about minus 2.4 so see 2.4 is obviously like more the absolute value is larger than 1.5 so therefore we are at this equation so at e also will be at saturation level so likewise you need to fill up your this thing so now tell me what will happen after we reach point y from y to thereafter right like this this location or probably this location like extreme position so at extreme position your v in is 2.5 so if i put v in here 2.5 then vdd is also 2.5 that means our vgsp is 0 and if your vgsp is 0 then from this equation you can say our pmos would be at cutoff region so it will be at cut off region simple so we need to do same thing for nmos also and uh, okay let me do for one situation so let us take point a for nmos so at point a we know already we know that our v in is less it is around 0.4 and our v out is near about 2.5 so if i put this thing here then it is simple see your v in e, v in is your less then 2.5 surely because it is 0.4 here so that means your v, vgsn minus vt will, will be more less than your vdsn so here our nmos would be at saturation region and the most important point is this point actually you will find out because at c your nmos will again be saturation so that means your pmos is also at saturation and your nmos is also at saturation and actually it is the point c where maximum power dissipation happen you won't probably relate this thing now but we will relate this thing in our next lecture if you know exactly why at point c power dissipation happen most of the then please let me know in the comment section and if you observe this thing then actually your pmos thing will repeat here like first our nmos will be cut off here then it will go through saturation then it will be at linear linear and linear here right so likewise you need to explain your interviewer about every so in the next video i'll be taking the most important thing and that is the analysis of noise margin for our cmos inverter till then if you still haven't subscribed to my channel you can subscribe don't forget to like and also comment down about feedback like is it going well or you think i can improve on some aspects till then tata bye bye